It takes us longer than ever to leave our bed in the morning. It's my favorite togetherness time. Yes, it's exhausting, but worth every breathless groan. But because you're That's a gentleman, a date. you just keep eating it, right? You just keep <laughs> eating that date. Because once you start a thing, you don't want to stop it. So, And people I mean, complained? <laughs> a cup of coffee with my, with mom. my mom. I'm getting ramped up, and I, I, I don't want to make this about me. Uh, tell me about your problems. I don't have any problems, and I just found my post. Don't worry. Do you think it's suitable to read over the airwaves? Well, you thought it was suitable to share with 250,000 of your little Facebook friends, so go but, ahead. Let's but hear it. They're taking it in a slightly different way. Let me know how you think I meant this. <laughs> okay. First of okay. all, describe the pictures that accompany the post. <laughs> today if you would well here's a picture of dad standing in the living room looking at his ipad he's dressed very natalie in a awkward white shirt and mm -hmm. brand new jeans blue jeans mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. fit him perfectly which is not an easy feat to accomplish and in the second picture he's standing at the foot of the bed I'm lying on the bed, and you can only see my feet. And he has one of those resistance bands around my foot that mm. we were given in um, physical therapy. I have arthritis in my feet and hips. And All right, Hands. here we go. It's only 150 words. All right. I'll I'm 85 years old. It's unnatural to have these romantic feelings. But really, when your husband looks so good in his new jeans... What's a wife to do? I hope it's not TMI, but at 85 and 90, it takes us longer than ever to leave our bed in the morning. It's my favorite togetherness time. Yes, it's exhausting, but worth every breathless groan. I can only hope that Al and Stephanie downstairs can't hear us. Nice pelvic thrusts, hon. Tighten those abs. Now a buttock squeeze, yes. Can you lift your legs a little higher? Great. Now squeeze the ball between your knees. Can you give me a little more resistance, hon? A little more. Oh, nice. That's just right. Nothing satisfies that need for intimacy all day long, quite like morning exercise. Give it a try. So, isn't it obvious to you that I'm talking about exercise, a workout? Oh, yeah. Super obvious at the Super end. Super obvious, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely a workout you're describing. Okay. Is that what well, the kids then, are calling it these days? Yeah. Then I. Then, exactly then there's no calling. shame here, and um, a lot of people are liking it. <laughs> I bet they are. Yeah. Do you care? They're getting I mean, ideas. Is, I mean, are you, do you care about likes and clicks and and shares and and comments? Like I mean, I think it doesn't I know the determine answer. my mood for the day, if that's what you mean. I can still survive if something doesn't get a lot of likes. I do pay attention because it tells me how people feel about my posts, and I am a writer, and I'm doing a book. So if I see that people just go crazy over, I write. I write about date night, about mm -hmm. dad, and me, and how maybe once a month. We have a date night. Uh, we go to dinner together, and we then we see a movie. And but I, you know, I'm all about humor, and I there is a lot of humor. People love it, and I get more likes, I get more shares, and more comments for those posts than any. That tells me that people like relationship stories. Hmm. Um, you know? it, tell, it, it tells me that, they're, that they've got an inner eight-year-old, and they like just a little bit of naughty. They like a little innuendo, you know? <laughs> they I mean, do they, like a little bit of naughty. Yeah, not too much. But, like, you're, you know, you're 85, and your audience is, you know, a little different than, than mine. And certainly it was different than what the Dirty Jobs are audience was but how do you know if you've gone too far do you ever feel like you've 
written something and put it out there that you'd like to take back because it was just a little, just a little too much? Not yet. No. Mm -mm. (laughs) Because you've sent me half a dozen saying, Michael, is this in good taste? Michael, do you think this is too much? Michael. I mean, I don't know if you remember, but my old bosses at Discovery had files on their desks filled with complaints from viewers and sponsors and just an army of angry acronyms who were always watching the show just to be offended if if I went a little too far in one direction or another. Like you're talking about dates. Do you remember? I did a stand up once at a date farm. Do you remember this? A date farm, vaguely. Yeah, it's a date. They, they this grow is dates. not a farm where people take their date. It's no. a farm that grows. <laughs> no, it's a it's a farm. It's like date palms, right? It's like it's like poly, you're, So so the job was pollinizing uh, date palms, so they grew the dates faster. The dates that you eat, right? Like like medjool dates. I think this company was. Chuck, do you remember this? Uh, no, I, I don't recall it. I was just biting my tongue with the dates that you eat. Well, that was the whole point. I walked toward the camera holding a box filled with dates. And as I was taking bites of the date, I was talking to the camera about how satisfying a good date could be in your mouth and how unsatisfying a bad date could be. Some dates, some dates I said, go down easier than others. And some oh, dates, the minute you put them in your mouth, you realize this is just not going to work out for me, right? And you know at that moment the date is probably over. But because you're That's a gentleman, a date. you just keep eating it, right? You just keep <laughs> eating that date because once you start a thing, you don't want to stop it. So, And people I mean, complained? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, how it got on the air is still a bit of a mystery uh, because all hell broke loose. I mean, angry calls to the product. Well, it started with the network, and the network called the production company, and the production company ultimately called me, and they're like, what were you thinking? I'm like, what do you, what do you mean, what was I thinking? I was eating a literal date as I was talking. And they're like, you, you talked about a date getting stuck in your throat. Do you realize what I'm like? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm just a guy <laughs> eating dates. <laughs> and so, I mean, this is so stupid. It is so childish, infantile, immature. But, you know, it kept the, the conversation is, on its feet. That show had two audiences kids <laughs> who loved it, and you satisfied them and spoke to them. And then on a whole other level, you spoke to adults. And kids just took you literally. But adults heard something else. They took it to the naughty place. They They really did. Michael, do you remember the show you did about gooey ducks? I thought that was way over the line. I mean, you had show and tell. I mean, you had a... Oh, yeah. You actually helped... Well, I won't go into detail, but it was almost embarrassing for me to watch. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, folks, uh, gooey ducks are spelled G-E-O-D-U-C-K-S. They're giant clams, and they, they look harmless enough in their resting state. But when they're fully elongated, Mom, I think it's fair to say the resemblance. Tongue like a giraffe. <laughs> well, like, or a horse. I mean, the, the difference between yeah. a fully extended gooey duck and, and a male horse's uh, member uh, is, I mean, there is no difference, except a horse is attached to one <laughs> and not the other. <laughs> and so I had, remember, I walked toward the camera in the beginning of that episode, and I had a gooey duck in my jacket pocket. And I just walked up to the camera and said, is that a gooey duck in your pocket? Or are you happy to see me? And we got that on the air, right? I was pretty proud of that. A couple of, you know, a couple of disapproving emails, but not not too many, really. Yeah, but but you held one, and really, it was more human than horse, and you held it, and it was it was filled. 
And then all of a sudden, it shot off the fluid, and then it fell. Well, I don't know how that got on the air. I mean, Dad and I thought it was really funny, but I Go back to the part where you think that more resembled a human than a horse. And tell me more about the humans you've run across. (laughs) Well, mostly because of position. The one that you were holding was upright, you know, and the... And the fluid came out of the top. Well, sure. With the horse. Well, I'm t- we're it's talking about downright. this thing was four <laughs> inches in diameter and about a foot long. Oh no! Oh really? Oh yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Get Dad in here for a minute. I got it. <laughs> oh my god! I want to see something. I got oh, questions. No. 